we'll move to the next section as well, selling your products better, which is, you know, I guess the definition or one of the main definitions of selling is the exchange of money in returns for one's product or services, you know, essentially. Mm. What would you recommend for people selling things? You know, you mentioned before about how the art of sales in its sense is a little bit dead, but you know, things like cold calling, reaching out to people on LinkedIn, how do you, you know, for people who need to sell stuff or want to reach out to different clients or different people, what would be your approach for sales? It's a really good question. And if we kind of layer that on the things we discussed, so have deep empathy for the person you're talking to, so mm-hmm. you know what's going on inside of them, presenting what you're talking about uh, as a solution to a problem that you know that they have. But then in the solution component of the conversation, you have to understand people don't buy products and services. People buy solutions for problems that they have, right? No, in my case at the Entourage, we're an education institution, people don't buy courses. People buy a version yep. of themselves that they dream of becoming, right? Yep. So Apple, people don't come to you and say, I really want to do this course for no reason. They come to you and say, I'm struggling with this, or I need help with this, or I, you know, I'm looking for this. Yeah. How do I get there? Am I right? Well, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, when, when you're selling a product, or if I'm selling you a product or service, I'm coming at this conversation from my perspective because I've got an agenda. For your benefit, if I, yeah. For my benefit. If I put that to the side for a second and just go, what's going on for you? And if I follow your customer's um, buying decision deep enough inside them through to their mind down to their heart yep. right what i will ultimately find is that you're helping them meet an emotion or meet a value uh, that they have like a personal value yep. right and so you need to find what that is and speak to that okay apple don't sell sorry tell no no, no. Sh- keep going keep going no no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want to hear from you no, less from me more from you <laughs> apple have never sold a phone in their life right they they don't sell phones they don't sell computers you know we've got a panel behind these cameras up the back there with three apple computers right when you're sitting behind an apple computer, right now you, yeah. exactly i've got one in my Your one in my pocket, pocket. Yeah. right like so there's five apple devices in sight right now it's probably more <laughs> heaps more i'd say um, yeah and they've never sold a phone or a computer in their life when you're sitting behind an Apple computer, you're creative, you're um, a little bit rebellious, you think outside the box, right? Yep. That's, what, that's what the product says about you and that's why we have such an affinity toward them. And yep. so again, if you can follow the buying decisions into the hearts and minds of the consumer, you'll find something so much more powerful than the product itself. That ex- yeah, that experience and that emotion that you get when you're using it as well, which is 100%. such a big part of sales too, I think. So. When it comes to clients, you know, you've got a whole lot of clients that you either have had to sell your product or services to or people that have you know, bought into what you're doing. How do you manage those to be able to either continually sell to them or upsell them depending on what you've got? Because you know, obviously you have a, a, you know, a need to make your business as well. Like it's not just once they buy into the experience, that's all well and good, but then you want to be able to keep them in there and get them because you know, obviously each side of the equation does have an agenda as well that you want to you know, make money by delivering great products, but you still want to make money. Yeah, and so, you, you absolutely fundamental have to deliver on the promise, better yet exceed the promise in which the transaction occurred, yep. right? But if we take that as a given, and let's say it's a consultancy type of a relationship, or like it's an ongoing relationship-based deal, yep. um, people are silently begging to be led, mm-hmm. right? Everybody from the customer that you're selling to, to the person that's interviewing you for a particular job, everybody, including you, including you, including myself, we're all begging to be led, right? And so um, to sell on an ongoing basis to the same client or to get promoted on an ongoing basis, it's about needs identification, right? What do they need now? What do they need now? What can I contribute given my recent experience or my visibility or my position? What can I contribute now? And if you keep highlighting the road, you know, 50 yards ahead, 50 yards ahead, 50 yards ahead, lead them down that path. Um, When looking at at it through the lens of leadership, I think you'll be able to sell a lot more effectively. Cool. So another question now, I guess a bit general stuff. Um, From Laura, she says, 60% of small businesses shut up shop in the first three years from the Bureau of Statistics. Um, What are the greatest- sad, isn't it? Well, yeah, but so what are the greatest- what are the greatest challenges that are currently facing you know, business owners starting something new? And then what are the key things that startups need to do to achieve and then maintain that kind of cut through? So we'll start with the first one. So the greatest challenges that small businesses or new businesses are facing? A lack of education, mm. right? Like it's harder in Australia 
to ride a jet ski than it is to start a business. Because to ride a jet ski, you need to get a license. To start a business, Anyone you go to abr.gov.au, yeah. you've got 60 bucks, whatever, I can't remember how much it costs. You know, 15 minutes later, you've got a bit, you, you know, like you've got a business. Yeah. You can employ people, you can, <laughs> you know, accumulate tax, with, you, you do all the things. With that no are, skills required. You don't, there's zero nothing skills, to qualify you Zero you qualification, yeah. you know, right? And so, um, what is what the good thing that's happened in the last sort of say five to eight years is a greater degree of good education coming into the Australian landscape um, that truly enables people to learn how to start and build successful businesses. A business will never outgrow its founder, right? The best entrepreneurs, you know, here at the Entourage, we've had um, people come to us. Uh, they start, you know, they start off with us doing twenty grand a month. A few years later, they're doing $35 million a year, right? They come to us, they're working from their kitchen table. <laughs> Three years that? later, they sell a portion of their business at a valuation of $50 million, right? So in terms of genuinely starting, enabling people to start and build successful businesses, they're, they're, you won't find anyone better in the world uh, than the entourage, right? One of the things, the, the core thing that I've identified in looking at all of the members that have come through the entourage, particularly the successful ones, is those who go on to achieve a high level of growth in their business, realize that their growth in their business is a direct reflection of their personal growth. Right. And so they're always learning. Yeah, right. And a question from a Richard who says, is fear the greatest hurdle to success? It can be, and it probably is, yes. That's not to say that you need to wait until fear goes away before you'll be able to succeed, because guess what? It never goes away, right? That voice inside your head which tells you you're not good enough, you're a phony, you're gonna get found out tomorrow, never goes away, right? It's called the imposter syndrome. That It yeah. never goes away, yeah. right? And so regardless of how successful you become, you will always have that voice inside your head. So it's not about getting over the fear or overcoming the fear. It's about going, that fear is part of being human, you know what, I'm gonna do it anyway. Yeah, right, so you, what, how do you deal with that from your own self? You know, you, when you, does that little voice in your head pop up for you at what moments in your life? All the time, right? Because being an entrepreneur, by definition, you need to pioneer, right? Like if I just sat behind my desk and just did, you know, the same thing every day, then uh, the, the business wouldn't evolve and the business wouldn't grow. So by definition as an entrepreneur or anybody pursuing a dream, right? Most of my people here are very entrepreneurial style people. Yep. You're constantly outside your comfort zone. If you're outside your comfort zone, by definition, you're uncomfortable, right? And so for anybody chasing a dream, that voice inside your head which tells you you're not good enough and you know, you're in over your head and every single day. Yep. And what you, the trick is not to wait until it goes, but to use it to spur you to do more. To not say, I'm just gonna, you know, hide behind my fear for a while. When Use I feel it to ready, get out go of bed into it. Half an hour <laughs> earlier, right? Like, if, like that's what fear should do. It should get you moving. Yeah. Are there any industries that you think are doing, you know, selling well at the moment, or where do you see kind of the future of sales in that sense? That's a really yeah. good question. Um, on, yeah. <laughs> I, th I think tech businesses are, are good to look at. You know, if you if you look at Atlassian. For example, yeah, they're, yeah. they're an iconic, you know, they won the GQ Entrepreneur of the they Year. They did, yeah, last year's last awards, year. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was really cool. And I'm really glad that Scott and Mike won that because they're the best entrepreneurs, in my view, to ever come out of Australia. Um, you know, wow, that's a big call. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and like financially, it's almost true, right, in terms of people that are self-made, like if, if you just look at the dollars and cents anyway. Yeah, absolutely. But um, yeah, no, re really impressive people and, and, and just so incredibly humble and so, giving to the entrepreneurial space in Australia. So everyone's got a lot of respect for, um, for the Atlassian guys, but you know, the way they sell, well, the way they don't sell to large corporates, but still enroll so many people into their programs, so many large corporations in their program is truly world-class. And it comes back to what I was saying before in terms of sell less to help people buy more. Yeah, absolutely. So another question from Jay, uh, what are the best and most important traits or habits an entrepreneur should have? I think all, Great entrepreneurs, um, I call it the dichotomy of all great entrepreneurs, right? Like it's two almost juxtaposing uh, characteristics. The first one is, is that we tend to be incredibly independently minded. Mm -hmm. And so we're less susceptible to societal expectations or other people's opinion or following the traditional path. We don't, we, we hear it and we kind of care, but we're, we don't really. Yep. You're in your own lane, I guess. In a yeah, bit, yeah, exactly. And the, and, the, and the dichotomy to that 
or the other side of that same coin in great entrepreneurs is they have a huge uh, hunger to learn and to be coached. Typically, when you've got a highly independently minded person, they think they know it all, they don't seek knowledge. Typically, when you've got someone that just wants to be coached, can lack the independence of thought. Yep. When you find both of those characteristics in the one individual, watch them. That's a winner. That's a winner. Well, and our last question from Brooke, who says, what's the biggest mistake that you've made in business oh, and what did God. you learn from it? If you can pick just <laughs> one, you know, out of many mistakes I'm sure you've made. Brooke, how long do you have? <laughs> um, You've got a bit of time. The biggest mistake I've made in business? Um, it, man, everything. Uh, growing too fast, <laughs> not growing fast enough, yep. having too much capital, not having enough capital, everything, um, everything. Every, what have every you learned from that? If there's one thing you can think that you've, yeah, what you've learned from each of those things. The, 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 the learning is, is that when you're pursuing particularly a non-traditional path, which all of you probably are, given that the traditional path ceased to exist about 10 years ago, you will make an incredible amount of mistakes, right? Like, I think it was, uh, I think it was Warren Buffett, who's the most successful investor of all time, mm. said the person who is right 49% of the time will rule the world, right? People get hung up on not making decisions and not making moves because it's like, this has to be the right thing or it has to be the right career, it has yep. to be the right job or the right business, or the right play, the right strategy, whatever, right? It's the people that go, you know what, I'm never gonna know the future, but I'm gonna go hard at it anyway and I'm yep. gonna make decisions. Because here's the thing, in business you never have enough information, you never have enough capital, and you never have enough resources <laughs> before you need to make the decision. To go and do it, yeah. To go and do it. Well, there's another say that like perfection is the enemy of progress, so that's you can't a, that's you exactly spend too much time saying. getting hung up on that's that. That's exactly yeah. what I'm saying. Cool, well, that wraps it up for today. Thank you everyone for their questions and for watching. Uh, Jack will be the guy asking the questions the next couple of weeks um, in the chair, uh, talking with a few different other business owners and entrepreneurs that you'll see very soon. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.